Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be explaining the mystery of Eta Carina. The explosion that you're about to see happened approximately 170 years ago and for the longest time the scientists thought it was a supernova. But turns out that it was something else and in this video I'm going to explain to you what may have happened 170 years ago when this explosion occurred that resulted in the beautiful homunculus nebula. Anyway. Welcome to What The Man. So this beautiful homunculus nebula that you see on the screen was actually created approximately 170 years ago, far, far away, over 7,000 light years uh, away from our solar system, but it wasn't a supernova. and. For a very, very long time, the scientists uh, studying this particular um, nebula were actually wondering what may have occurred. And one of the most prevalent theories they explain this in a somewhat interesting manner uh, by imagining an object that used to exist here that may have been destroyed uh, through a collision with a bigger star. Now, first of all, let's actually explore what is currently happening in the system. Today, the Eta Carina system contains two stars, and this is something that we can't really visually confirm because there's basically a lot of um, dust particles covering the stars. But we know um, that once in a while we seem to see these tips of um, luminosity, and they seem to occur approximately five and a half years uh, in between. So that suggests that there is probably a binary system. And there are two really, really big, really large, really massive and super bright stars. The primary at the Carina A, which is right here, um, is ridiculously massive. It's probably over 150 masses of the sun. And the smaller uh, at the Carina B is anywhere between 30 to 50 masses of the sun. And uh, they have somewhat um, unusual and somewhat eccentric orbits. And they basically kind of orbit around each other in the way that you see here. So there's two orbits here. Um, the larger star obviously doesn't move as much. Uh, but the larger star may have actually been responsible for the explosion that we saw 170 years ago. And so if we go back 170, or I guess in this case, maybe more than 170, let's say 200 years ago, we would most likely discover another star in the system. I guess we can call it Eta Carina C. Uh, this particular star was a lot smaller and a lot less massive, um, but it was most likely the reason for the explosion we observed, because it wasn't a supernova, it was more like a nova, but a type of a nova where a tremendous amount of mass is released from the um, star system and creates a huge nebula that is essentially um, a relatively massive dust cloud. And it was so massive and so dense that it essentially created what is known as the homunculus nebula today. Now, why did all of this happen? Well, for this, you need to go a few thousand years back. And in this early system, we have two very massive stars orbiting around one another. But one of them is actually a little bit uh, more massive than the other. In other words, it's kind of going to most likely end its life a little bit earlier. So uh, um, it's going to possibly go supernova. But instead of going supernova, it actually grows so large that at some point its actual mass starts being absorbed by the other star. In other words, the outer shell star sort of starts being separated, and you'll see this maybe happening in a few seconds here, and gets absorbed by the other star until this bigger star now suddenly starts losing a lot of mass. Now, it didn't actually go supernova like you see right here but instead resulting in uh, one of the stars essentially just losing all of its mass to the other, and this will now become more and more massive until at some point this star will actually start slowly moving away from its partner, and the third star, known as Eta Carina C, will slowly make its way closer and closer to the larger star that's actually now growing more and more big. And at some point, the larger star will actually start emitting so much solar wind that it's basically going to push away its partner farther and farther away. 
Uh, but the uh, fact that its mass also has grown in size will make the smaller star here at the Carina C uh, approach um, the bigger partner and also change its orbit so much that it's at some point going to basically intercept the bigger partner. So here is the situation right before the so-called uh, Nova explosion. And we have this star, Eta Carina B, slowly moving away from Eta Carina A. Eta Carina A being extremely massive now, starts attracting uh, the C partner. And C is slowly decreasing in orbit, essentially slowly moving closer and closer to the larger star. And at some point, this third partner is actually going to approach the much larger Eta Carina A, uh, so close that it too will start falling apart and it will completely fall apart creating the ring around the much more massive star so right around here uh, it's going to pass so close to the star that it's actually going to be shredded apart and basically become just a ring now it might actually not happen here because its density is relatively high but Given enough time, after many, many passages, it's actually going to create a very, very beautiful ring around this primary star. And the much smaller star, Eta Carina B, which actually at this point was most likely just the helium core of its previous self, because it lost a lot of its mass to the uh, larger partner, um, was now kind of orbiting peacefully in a five and a half year orbit around all of this uh, creation. So what we have here is a very, very large, very massive star at the Carina A, much smaller uh, helium core at the Carina B, and a leftover ring that essentially was formed by Eta Carina C. All of this, though, is not going to last because around 170 years ago, this whole thing resulted in a very, very large Nova explosion. Basically, at some point, this ring reached the critical limit um, where you could potentially have a nuclear reaction and it detonated, creating an extremely powerful explosion known as Nova. And this Nova, with time, uh, basically created what's known as the Homunculus Nebula today. Now, this particular event uh, was so bright that it actually created a star that was the second brightest star in our skies, even though this was so far away, over 7,000 light years away from us. And this particular explosion, as you'll see in a few seconds, um, also most likely shifted the system around a little bit and eventually resulted in what we have today, a very large nebula. Uh, and in the middle of this nebula, there's an extremely powerful star which is Eta Carina A, orbited by much smaller Eta Carina B. And all of this is still in a very unstable system that one day will actually create a supernova inside of this homunculus ne uh, nebula that will then create an extremely bright event. So bright as a matter of fact that um, it will probably be visible in our night skies or even in our day skies for quite a long time. Now Eta Carina A um, and Eta Carina B are part of the um, Carina Nebula a very, very large nebula that is only visible from Southern Hemisphere. But um, nevertheless, though, the event that's going to create the supernova is going to be one of the coolest and probably one of the brightest events that is going to occur. We think it's going to happen in the next, uh, well, anywhere from tomorrow to maybe 3 million years. But it's going to be one of the brightest supernova we've ever observed. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. And just to summarize everything, here is the visual representation and essentially simulation of what we think happened. So this is the three stars that then became two stars that will then most likely create an extremely powerful supernova in the future. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully now you know what may have happened in Eta Carina system and what this system will actually bring in the future. Now, we expect the supernova to be extremely powerful, but for now, all we know is that the homunculus nebula that you see right here is definitely one of the most mysterious nebula out there. Um, and the amount of mass that was released during the actual Nova explosion was absolutely mind-blowing. It's something like 30 masses of the sun. The nebula itself will potentially create quite a lot of 
various star systems in the future. Thank you for watching, space out, and as always, bye-bye. And don't forget to subscribe and maybe even click on that bell button or, you know, like the video. Maybe even support this channel on Patreon. Bye-bye.